So anyway, while I'm working uh, on my artwork, uh, for the last couple days I have been listening to an audiobook. Um, the audiobook is a Citizen of the Galaxy by uh, Robert Heinlein. The book is about 10 hours, and I'm on about hour 6. I'm not sure I'll have any time to listen to it today, but probably tomorrow or the day after I will finish listening to it. So I thought I would spend a, a few moments uh, giving some of my thoughts on the book. Now, audiobooks, uh, I think, are a good way to uh, enjoy uh, such works, uh, especially if uh, one's um, eyes are uh, somewhere else as they are with mine. Um, uh, there are, of course, pros and cons to this. It is important to get an audiobook with a, a good reader, and this one does. This uh, this particular gentleman provides uh, different voices for the different characters, which is very uh, useful. Um, now, of course, a drawback with audiobooks is that um, in such as in my case, I can get really involved in an image and just my concentration may be taken away for a few moments and then I'll forget what happened. Um, and of course the other thing is, books like this, which were written in the 1950s, were really not intended to be read aloud and they don't quite have the cadence that works written even 20 years before had. So what's interesting about, say, the pulp fiction of uh, Robert E. Howard or Lovecraft or when we go back in time, such as Edgar Allan Poe, those books were intended to be read aloud, and oftentimes they are better read aloud than on the page. I'm not sure that Citizen of the Galaxy was really written that way. The impression I get is that, I mean, this was a serialized work, of course, is that Heinlein wrote this very quickly, which is a reason why the book is slightly uneven in places. We just have things that just sort of plop into place at the right time, and there isn't a lot of foreshadowing. There's a little bit of foreshadowing. Um, this is not a criticism of a book, it's just a way to explain um, its present form. It would have been nice if uh, Heinlein had given this book another uh, draft or two, um, and it really uh, differentiated the characters. Something I've noticed with Heinlein, as with many writers, but we'll just use Heinlein as an example, is he really only has about three characters. We have the boy, we have the wise old man, and we have the girl. The girl could be a grown woman, the girl could be a young girl, could be anything. All of the women are the same character, all the old men are the same character, and all of the young men. Uh, you can get what I'm saying. And once again, this isn't a criticism. I think most writers do have similar deficiencies. But with Heinlein, when one reads enough, uh, it definitely is noticeable. Now, fortunately, a good reader can uh, bring out some differences just with the way he reads uh, the different voices, and that can be useful. However, around hour three or four, I was thinking, is this uh, Thorby the, the slave, or is this um, Johnny Rico from Starship Troopers? And why is it that every paternal figure that Thorby meets sounds the same, he sounds like the professor from the moon is a harsh mistress, it's kind of the same guy over and over again. But this, in a way, is also the charm. Now, I think the value of a book like this is that Heinlein was able to play with lots of ideas in a way which is quite amusing for the reader. So, for instance, we get different views, well, well different societies. We have one society, which is essentially a space feudal India, out of Kim, but then we get another society, which are kind of space gypsies. Um, we get glimpses of alien societies, and of course we always end up with the Space Force. Um, the Starship Troopers are the Space Force of, of, of the sci-fi imagination. And, and it can be charming to examine these in, in a way that isn't with sort of conventional anthropology. Ursula K. Le Guin does such works um, a little better in some ways, but with her there tends to be even less plot and perhaps even fewer characters. Uh, I just listened to um, The Left Hand of Darkness not too long ago. I'm not sure there were any characters <laughs> in that book. It's still a good book. I do recommend it. It is not... It, it's but um, with her, uh, she's basically uh, world-building 
the 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 authors. Um, th- uh, there's actually um, I'll be listening to a podcast about the lathe of heaven sometime today, so perhaps I'll have more to say about Le Guin later. Le Guin is is a is a great writer, of course, um, brilliant in many ways, but um, like Heinlein, you know, she she has her uh, her own peculiarities. Now, when listening to Heinlein, part of me is thinking, well, of course, this should be a graphic novel. This really should not have been a novel. There are many memorable scenes which would be better explained through visuals. It looks like someone has made a graphic novel, um, but once again, the important part are visuals. We don't need this narration, or we need very little narration. There are chunks of this book which I'm thinking just... That should be visual, that should be visual. And then these big long conversations could have been cut out, or they could have been made into bonus material at the end of a chapter, such as when the anthropologist lady had to explain the space gypsies to Thorby. And, you know, she was saying, like, oh, they have patrilateral cross cousin, blah, 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 complicated um, familiar relationships. That could have all been the, as Le Guin herself writes, the back of the book, the stuff in the back, uh, like Tolkien. Anyway, I really look forward to uh, the end of this book, I, and I hope I have some more to say about it, maybe in a couple days when I finish it. My mind is definitely an interesting author uh, to discuss uh, for, for many reasons. And I, um, anyway, I really do need to start working on this page, so I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.